Hey, all right. Had a couple people jump on. A little worried. There was nobody uh, in the waiting room and nobody there for a couple minutes. <laughs> How's everyone doing? I had, yeah, good evening. Hi. I had my audio muted. Um, good, man. I just uh, glad that we're going to have a little time with uh, just one of us and or two of us. Be able to ask a lot of questions. Yeah, a couple more jumping in, but um, no problem at all. Uh, what I'm going to do real quick um, is just go over the submitted questions. Um, Robert, I see you on here, so let me pull yours up here just so I can get everything. Um, so, yeah, you were asking if it's possible to search a whole country um, instead of, like, by city and uh, yeah. adding those yeah. results. Or can you do it at the same time if it's just by by city? Okay. Um, let's see here. So, yeah, by country. I mean, you can still do it by country, but like as you notice, the the results are a little bit more limited when you do that. And the reason being is when you're doing it by uh, by country. Let me pull up an example here. Um, here we go. So uh, if I if I did, um, uh, who are you looking for again? It was a win window blind companies. Window, yeah. Yeah, window blinds. And I'll just put that in test. Um, and that was Scotland? Yeah, Scotland, yeah. Okay, so yeah, initially it'll pull up these guys here. Um, and then if we load more, I'm just trying to see where where it stops just to give you an idea of, um, I don't know, it's still going. You know, to tell you the honest truth, I didn't press that more button at the bottom. Oh, okay. No, <laughs> I'll, I'll get it. If the truth be told. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that's all good. Um, because where I was going with that is, okay, if you're getting limited results, sometimes it just depends on uh, what Google has done for that area and that country, because this these initial results are from Google, right? So if they have, um, like I know, I know in the US and in certain parts, for instance, like Google will make you do it by by city and not just by country, or they might limit it to certain things. So I'm like, okay, is this one of those instances where google has said uh hey you have to list your business a certain way and so if you just put in the country they might not all appear because that initial search is through google yeah. that's where i was going with that how many how many how many you've got there kyle what, what how many did you come up there um i think this loaded uh what did i have it set at 10 at a time so i think i got about uh got about 30 right here yeah maybe 40 there's about 240 like i came across today when I when I, what I what I did was I googled all the towns on cities of Scotland and they basically just did them one at a time, and put, just kept adding to the list and it came to be two hundred and forty at the end of the day, and with England it came to be seven hundred seven hundred and forty. So was, there's roughly a thousand between the two, but it, it just took a long time to do that. It took me probably oh, got a good two hours, maybe maybe longer. Yeah, the, the other thing, too, that we've done here is, and that's why we do the, um, hey, do you want to load 10 at a time or 20 at a time or, you know, everything like that? Because obviously, you know, with, with the initial search in, in Google, you could do the UK, right, on Google, and you'd probably get, um, after I don't know how many pages, you probably could look through a thousand of those businesses by by doing that. But um you know, we don't run it all at once so that you're like, wait, a thousand credits just went through. I know I got this, but that might not have been the type of businesses I wanted to look at, or maybe I only wanted to choose like 20 at a time or, um, 
so yeah that's that's why we do that and and uh yeah it takes a little bit to build out that list if you are looking for you know 500 or a thousand or two thousand you can still build it up to that um but yeah as you mentioned you know it takes some time to do that just because of those those things in place yeah the other thing i'm having to do is go through it now and pull out big chain companies which i'm not interested in um i'm not sure whether it be in australia but in the uk is the it's a big multiples big the, the big diy stores which and who would be interested in a, a live um, uh, chat budget and um i'm trying to have to go through it i don't think there's any way around that carry i think i've just got to do that and just take it on the chin and just remove those big multinational companies from the list would you would you agree with that or is there a, a way i can go around that um the way that we've gotten around it and we've done this with, with restaurants too because the same thing will happen you search mm. for a restaurant and then you got five mcdonald's in there and you're like i'm not gonna yeah. call mcdonald's yeah, precisely yeah yeah um yeah so it's it's just getting to um like describing the business a little bit more so like that example with the restaurants instead of just saying um you know sandwich shop we did um like okay is it a specific sandwich shop or a specific um ethnicity for a restaurant like are you looking for uh you know restaurants in the thai industry or mexican or indian or um so just getting a little bit more specific with that search okay. and not okay. yeah because the, the big companies use the generic terms because they can pay for the advertising on it so yeah. yeah okay okay cool so a bit more be a bit more specific with the with the search yeah um because okay, so even looking like um you know, you could do instead of just windows blinds, maybe it's windows blind shutters. Maybe it's um, I'm just looking through a couple examples here um, or yeah, windows blind shutter companies. Um, it's like yeah, a big one around here, you know, it'd be like Lowe's or Home Depot or Menards or yes, if I yeah. put in windows in Colorado. That's who would come up, you know, for those companies. So yeah, yeah, yeah. just being a little bit more okay. uh, descriptive. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. That's good. Thank you for that. Really enjoyed yeah. the training on Friday, by the way, with the um, Walt did with the close bot. That was absolutely fantastic training. So if you speak to him, say thank you for that. Two, two yeah. and a half hours of real, real um, fantastic work. Any, any ideas regarding the just? I don't want to hog the time here. Any ideas on those workflows may be available on the snapshot uh, uh, shop? Any any kind of thoughts on that? Yeah. So. Um... We're currently putting that together, uh, hoping to have that out by Monday. Oh, fantastic. Um, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, so we can provide that. And then I just wanted to mention uh, Synthflow training is is tomorrow. So if you wanted to check that out, um, you know, if you have an interest in, in Synthflow, we're doing that tomorrow. Same kind of training uh, style, just going in and showing you how to build it, how it works. Yeah, that'd be good. That'd be good. Yeah. That's using, using voice. Yeah. Cool. Um, all right. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Um, cool. What else we got? We got Jamie on here. David's dropped a question in here. Um, what percentage do you expect to close based on current data? Yeah. Um, Great question, Dave. So with, yeah, with what you're trying to do and attracting those guys, um, for companies looking for a solution like that, they're, they're looking for um, education based. Like since this is, like people know about it, but since it's still so new, they just need, they need a little more research on it. So providing a resource, um, you know, for that to help them understand like how, how it can solve the problem of either, you know, is it, is it not being able to hire enough team members? And and I'm just going off of, um, uh, you know, what we were talking about in a previous uh, training with this, like either hiring um, is a challenge and using this system to fill that gap or uh, their current, you know, employees and, and helping ease the workload um, for them. So making them more effective, more efficient, um, that's one route to go with, with some education on that and, um, you know, just providing them with that. Cause if you just go in and say, Hey, um, 
I've got a, I've got a bot system you need to check out, you know, then they're like, all right, cool. I don't understand how that works uh, for my business or how that can help me. Um, so that'd be a couple examples there. Um, the other one too, I think it would also depend on, um, I think it would also depend on, uh, David, remind me real quick. You said you uh, match your ICP. Um, I don't have that in front of me at the moment. Remind me real quick what your ICP is. Well, I mean, quite honestly, it's, it's pretty much any small or medium sized business that needs leads. I mean, it's, it's almost infinite. And I'm, I don't know whether I need to really niche down into a, a specific group of, of people or whether I should leave it broad like that and, and just, you know, basically look for small business owners or medium sized business owners. Yeah. Yeah. No good question. So we can leave it broad on, you know, the page dedicated um, to the system. Like when they, when they come on and check that out. Right. Uh, but what I would do with your outreach is make it more tailored uh you know, to somebody specifically so that they know, oh, this system is for, um, you know, as an example, this system is for dental practices. All right, cool. It's telling me how, how it can make our practice more efficient, how we can book more appointments, um, you know, get more, get more services booked, uh, follow up with our current list and get them in more often, um, you know, things like that. So you could, you could take, what it does and then tailor it to um a specific niche and then that's how you do the the outreach but um you know for what we're providing for you on the on the site you can still keep that uh broad because then they're going to go check out um all right cool how does how does it work and what is it uh but your messaging to them initially should be specific so they know that you're talking to them about uh you know what they have going on and, and, you know, I've, I've got like, I got a thousand credits that comes with first month. So I can obviously use those to generate leads and find, you know, the people that, that would be good to put in the CRM. I've also got, you know, older, not old, but different lists of prospects that I, that I think will be good, you know, basically agency owners. So I've got a list of those that can go into the CRM. And I, and I know that the bots can go out and basically try to engage with those people. But should I, should I at that point, you know, anytime the bot engages with somebody but doesn't close it, close the deal, should I look in the opportunities tab of the, of the CRM and, and maybe jump in at that point and try and, you know, educate them or close them at that point? Um, so what I would do initially is I would I would tailor the first outreach message to that uh, specific industry with what yeah with what it is and how it can help them and then that will get the conversation started and then the bot takes over from there and then if they um, you know wanted more information on it it's like okay cool book uh, or request a call back if they just want to speak to somebody you know somebody being the um, the voice call portion of this. And then they're they're having a call, uh, you know, when when it's convenient for them, and then that would take them through to uh, either getting yeah getting more info, um, and either hey here's here's either a special we have going on or here's how you sign up or um, you know taking it from there. So that's kind of how that flow would work. Yeah, I mean, what what is the the sequence of questions that the the bot will ask the prospect to make sure they're qualified or, or, you know, try to engage with them. I mean, what, what does the bot say to, I mean, if it, is this, is this, uh, is this mostly SMS or are we going to be using email too, or how, how do we reach out? To uh, it depends on how they, on how they respond. So if they respond to an email, that's, that's where it takes over from there. If they respond to a text, um, then it's from that point. Uh, they have to request the phone call. Um, the bot doesn't do cold outreach on calls because that's currently 
uh, against regulations. I don't know if they'll ever open that up, but um, so they have to request a call. So that's where that, that portion will come in. But um, yeah, the way that the questioning works is it's conversational. So it's not pre-programmed to say, hey, only ask this set of questions. Conversational piece is, hey, have a natural conversation, uh, be helpful, be informative, um, be effective with uh, what you're asking about the, their services compared to um, what you know the company currently offers, how it could work for their industry. Um, so it's really more of like a consultative approach, right? Hey, is this going to you know work for what you're trying to do based on your industry, your uh, hey, I'm trying to book more calls or more appointments. Okay, this is how this can help you. Is this something you want to get started with today? Right. So it's always coming back to um, getting them on the program, but it's not programmed with uh, you will only ask, you know, these five questions and then that's it. Um, it's all based on on conversation. So it's just going to take the conversation to where it needs to go, clarify, and then, you know, ask them to uh, get started. So, so the bot won't reach out to cold prospects. I mean, I, I have to basically engage them first and get them to want a call back. So the way that they're engaged is by um, the system adding them to a workflow. So the workflow says, hey, send cold email, right? Once they respond to to that, um, that's when the the conversation starts the bot takes over but that's all automated okay. so but will i use sms if we have the mobile number for the customer at that point you know how um, do they go, which do they use first so you want to go with with email first with sms they need to opt in so that's where i mentioned if you're sending out um if you're sending out something to say hey i have this report on how this can work for your industry um text us at, at this number, or, you know, we could even do like, uh, go here to um, fill out the form. Cause you don't want to, you don't want to send out your first email when you're doing cold, you don't want to send out a PDF attached to that. That'll, that'll bounce or you'll get sent to spam immediately. Um, right. So you have to get them to start the conversation. So you say, Hey, I've got this report for you. I've got this information for you. would love to provide it for you. Um, go here to to download it or, um, you know, reply to email to get more information or text us here to get it sent to you directly. And that's how you get the, the conversation going. And is that email sequence something that you guys set up for me or do I have to come up with a sequence? Yeah, as part of the enterprise uh, plan, that's that's included in there with our workflow. At some point, I'd like to see, you know, exactly what that is, so that I know, you know, what the bot's saying out there, or what what kind of message we're sending out. So. Yeah, that's going to be during um, the uh, call. It mentioned with the um, basically like, hey, here's the system that we built. Here's how everything works, and here's how to how to sell it. Um, yeah. So for you, that's uh, that's in a couple weeks from from now, and yeah. Sounds good. And then what kind of data are you getting at this point? Out of a thousand prospects, what percentage is the bot closing for people? I mean, I'd, I'd be happy with 5%, but <laughs> that'd be great. So. Yeah. Um, I don't have any specific data on a thousand right now, but um, yeah, it would really just depend on yeah, I mean that's that's a loaded question. <laughs> it would depend on industry, uh, right. sample size, um, like yeah, where are these thousand coming from? Um, yeah, yeah. I guess just assuming that they were, you know, are the kind of people that we would want to, you know, go go to get them, you know, interested. And I know that uh, Johan was saying that they had. They're they're consistent in getting about seven um, sold by the bot. Seven seven accounts a day that are not needing any human act human act activity or, or inter interface. The bot's basically doing it all. 
Yeah. Um, I just don't have like the percentage on, you know, what, what a thousand would be. Um, so yeah, Johan's accurate in that. Um, but yeah, the, the thousand, I mean, that would also depend on, okay. You know, are we looking at like in a day, in a week, in a quarter, um, you know, cause the same thing too, the reason why the, the bot system is so effective is not everybody, not everybody closes on that first, you know, outreach, right? right. Um, right now, like here to give you an idea on, on the data, it used to be seven to 12 touches and you were, you were good. Like you were going to close, you're going to close a the deal there. You're going to make something happen or at least keep the, keep the conversation going. Now it's up to 36. And that's why this is so important because yeah, because you can't follow up with that many people that many times all at once. No. Back when I started selling, it was eight, eight touches what that we were told. No, it just, you know, so that's back, you know, in a few years ago. But yeah, it's it's crazy now. Thirty six. I mean Yeah. you're, You're working really hard for your for your money then. Really hard. And the average, you know, salesperson, um, was it what quoted on the last training? Was it 80 or 93? They, they give up after, you know, the first couple of touches. They go, oh, this, this person's not going to do it. They move on. Right. right? But, uh, um, yeah, but the system's going to uh, keep engaging with them and keep answering questions and keep following up with them and keep, you know, trying to figure out, okay, what is, and that, that's why I mentioned the conversational piece of it. What is it that, and this is what I love about it. What is it about them that's, okay, they, they obviously were interested. They either confirmed something, they reached out, they did something, right, that said, hey, I raised my hand. I, I'm looking to do something. I'm ready to do something. And, um, yeah, with those 36 touches where most people, you know, fail and where this succeeds is, okay, what, what can we talk about that could answer that question that's keeping them from moving forward, right? So what, what is it that's preventing them from taking that next step? They're obviously interested, so what is it? And it just goes back to having a conversation with them and answering those questions and trying to figure it out. Yeah, that's, that's a good thing. I mean, the bot never gets tired. They never feel rejected. They never, you know, give up because, you know, somebody – didn't respond so yeah it's, that's cool yeah thing. they just go okay here's my list and here's uh what i'm scheduled to to do here's who i need to follow up with and it's done <laughs> right. you know i don't yeah. think about it like a superhuman salesman yeah all right cool thank you yeah um cool hey michael i just saw you jump on um I know you submitted a question ahead of time. Let me get over to that one real quick. Um, oh, okay. You said you like to make the most out of uh, search results. Um, was there anything you were looking for uh, in particular in search results I can help you with? Hey, Kyle. Sorry, I'm driving, but uh, really I was just jumping on the call to see what the q a call was was like uh first time and um and obviously i'm new completely new to white label suite so yeah it was kind of a generic question oh okay yeah no no problem um just want to make sure we got got anything answered for you but yeah um usually the flow of these calls uh when you when you register for it, um, you know, just put anything you have in that question box. Uh, that way we can um, come prepared with that for you. If there's anything that we need to, you know, either research or look at or, or do anything like that for you and um, get those questions answered. And then usually uh, just open up the floor after we've got all those submitted questions answered and go from there. Super, thanks. Yeah, no problem. Um, cool. Jamie, was there anything um, we could answer for you? You fell asleep. <laughs> I know. I'm not as entertaining as Walt, so you might have. Hey, as long as we get our questions answered, you're 
You're entertaining enough. <laughs> That's why we call him the the greatest showman. He does does all the webinars and all the speeches and all the. Well, it's, well, it's incredible. So is so the OM. You, you guys are amazing, amazing group. That was two and, half hours, two and a half hours on Friday you talked, wasn't it? Um, <clears> I've seen talk. him go for five, no problem. Really? Like, yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> it was eight o'clock UK time, and at 10.30, I was thinking, oh, man, I, I love this, but please stop. <laughs> I, had to go, I had to go to bed, and it took about an hour, an hour and a half for my brain to slow down again, enough to I should go to bed and sleep. But um, yeah, right. I, I'm, well, I'm, you know, the white label suite with the hose ball is looking to me like it's an absolutely phenomenal machine between the two between the two systems. It just, um, I, I'm really very very impressed with what you guys are doing. Very impressed with what Rice is doing, and I'm very impressed that you guys have bolted all together. I think this uh, really really. I, I, th I can see you guys going really far. Um, any, any chance you could have some meetings uh, kind of um, European time? Only kidding. Yeah. No, no, no. We, we've we um, obviously had people reach out in that time zone. And yeah, just trying to figure out what that looks like. We're, we're also trying to see what we could do, um, what we could do from, you know, just you guys having access to, to, uh, what we've looked at, um, and this might sound kind of crazy, but hey, with the power of AI, having like virtual uh, coach, you know, where you just go to a page, maybe it's on our site, maybe it's in our community, um, and that that coach has got anything and everything on the training we've we've ever put out, um, and just have a conversation with it. Hey, what do you think I should do with about this or? How would that look? Or I'm thinking about this kind of strategy. You know, how could White Label Suite help with that? Or, um, you know, just different things like that. So, yeah, we're looking at, okay, how can we make it work for multiple time zones? And then, um, you know, maybe there's just something on demand, too, that we can put together. Yeah, that sounds phenomenal. Yeah, that would be good. Am I not right? Am I right in saying that with Closed Watch? You can do a transcript of a training session and load up into the knowledge base. Yeah, absolutely. And then, so that's where you're coming from with that. You've, yeah. you've done a training session, two hours long or whatever, it is, translate, uh, transpose it into uh, a, a doc, upload it, off, off to the races. Yeah, and then set its objectives as, you know, you're an expert coach in this and you could do different bots for it right so one coach could be on business one could be on strategy one could be on um you know coach specifically for white label suite and then you set the objectives to say hey take them through obviously like start the conversation figure out what they're trying to do take them through these objectives um you know and go from there yeah that sounds good yeah that'd be, yeah. Really, that'd be really good in fact yeah thank you yeah, because we're like, hey, if we if we try to accommodate like every time zone, then it's the same thing that we're talking to you guys about with selling it to businesses, right? Like you increase the labor, cool, like you help everybody, you make it more effective. But how can we um, how can we increase the effectiveness of our team with what we've already got access to? And that's where we came up with the the coach idea. Awesome. Um, cool. I don't see more in the in the chat there. Um, um, Christy submitted one ahead of time, but she's not on, unfortunately. Um, oh, actually, you know what? Hers was on connecting high level. I think she's already reached out to support. So. Good there. Cool. What other questions do you guys have? Do you want to have a chat, Carol, about how to um, today, for example, I went through, I've downloaded 
um, probably a thousand window blind companies. Um, now what I'd like to do is do a synopsis on each of those companies. For example, what's, what's, what product range do they do? Um, so I can feed that into the bot. So when it's chatting to the person, it's coming from that knowledge base. A bit like we chatted about on Friday, that kind of idea. Um, to maybe chat about how we could do, um, I'm trying to remember the technical word you guys use. Um, basically you're using AI to have a look at the company and pull in the data from it. Yeah, um, so where that would come in is, let me share here. Um, say for instance, yeah, we'll just stick with the window blinds. Let me go to that list. Um, and I'll just run it here on this company. Is it, sad, is it sad for me to say to you, I know these companies? No. <laughs> if you pulled them up near near me, I'd, I'd know them all too. <laughs> <laughs> um, especially the, the contractors. Before uh, I was with um, White Label Suite, um, I helped build another, uh, it was an agency, not, not necessarily a software company, but um, we work primarily with contractors and I got to know that industry very well um, working with those guys. So, um, cool. So yeah, just to give you an example here. So we've, we've ran the summary and, and you can obviously do this in bulk. I did it just for the one company, but, um, uh, oh, I used a different prompt. Hold on one second. Let me do the. See what you're doing, Carol. How many credits does that take to do a summary? Is it one or more? Uh, it's just one. Just yeah. One. Okay, thanks. Um, and if you wanted to, you can still uh, add your own open AI API key if you didn't want to use credits. All right, okay, that's interesting. Right, I didn't know that. So tell, maybe maybe explain that later about the using our own AIP rather than using, I didn't know we could do that actually, that's interesting. Yeah, um, actually before we did the the switch here to credits um, on that, it was, you could only use this AI assistant if you had your own API key. And the feedback we got on it was, well, um, I don't want to subscribe to something else. And, you know, can you guys just make it credits and that's where we made the made the switch. Um, but yeah, I, I'll show you where that is here in, in just a sec. So uh, running the company summary, um, obviously you've got, hey, here's, here's who they are, here's what they do. And then given uh, Apollo Blind's goal to reach more property owners, um, you know, you can help them find and connect with their ideal clients and uh, can focus more on, you know, closing deals and doing less prospecting. Um, so where, where this would go is right into um, the contact and I'll have to pull up just somebody here. Um, this is going to go into the AI generated info. All right. Now you don't have to create this ahead of time. You don't have to build out any custom fields or try to do all that. Uh, as soon as you send over any data from white label suite to the sub account that you've got connected and high level, it will generate all of those custom fields for you and fill them in uh, with, with all of this company's info. So even their social media links, their phone number, um, all the contacts, because it goes into that company uh, field. And then for the AI stuff, um, that's gonna go into the, um, here it is, into the AI summary. So, what you'll do with that is tell Closebot in its objective, use that custom field to refer to during the conversation. And then that's how it knows, oh, hey, uh, John, I know you're with such and such company and I think it's great that you guys have received this award and whatever is found on, on the company. Yeah. Um, so that's, yeah, that's what that would look like. And, and that's how powerful it is. And when we figured this out, and started to build that out for uh, for us and then for what we tested with Prospect Falcon and how we did all that and took it to Bryce and said, hey, um, you know, we could supercharge the bots doing this. It blew his mind uh, because normally what you have in there for that conversation is only what you get from the person that's 
you know, talking to you. Um, and you might not have everything and they might not, you know, tell you enough to uh, have that conversation. So, um, yeah, that's why it's so powerful. Um, but yeah, where you go for the uh, API key under settings and then integration and open AI API. So this is where you would drop that in. Um, you just need to tell our system what version it is so it knows uh, when it's talking back and forth to open AI, uh, what model to use. And then um, you could also do the same thing for your uh, customers. So if you wanted them to use your API key instead of using credits, uh, you've got that option too. So on that front, kind of, sorry, I'm quite new to all, I'm not new to Closebot, but I'm new to um, like to WLS. Uh, so if I use my own um, API key in there, when do I use a credit? When I do searches, is that when I use credits, but not when I'm doing um, AI? Um, yeah, so it would just be for the searches. So right. um, you'd no longer use credits for the AI tools or the AI assistant gotcha. at that point. That makes sense. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Um, all right, cool. I've got one question in here. I think it's better for me to use affiliates or focus on the end user. Um, yeah, Dave, I think I think affiliates are super powerful. Uh, for this, like we, we got a uh, white label suite off the ground in, in four webinars and those were all driven by affiliates and um, that built our customer base fast. And, and at that point it only took those four webinars to, to get it off the ground. Um, and this was like, you know, four years ago. So, yeah, I think, I think doing that because these, these guys already have, um, they already have the base and they're always looking for something new to introduce them and something that's, you know, catchy and relative and new. And, um, yeah, I think affiliates would have, would have a blast, uh, promoting that for sure. And with the influencer search, um, you know, if you don't have, uh, affiliates right now, um, this would be perfect to to go out and uh, to look for those guys to connect with. Um, also in the the high level group, uh, there's affiliates in there. You know, so not just agency owners, but there's affiliates in there too, looking for for new opportunities. Yeah, I, I think you're right. I mean, the affiliate or the uh, influencer group. I mean, you could potentially have somebody who's got you know ten thousand followers, and if they like it, if they think it's a good product, then they can make money. You know passing it on and obviously I can make you know money off of their the business that they yeah. do. Yeah, it's just it's so powerful. Like even high level when they started uh, six years ago now, one affiliate got them off the ground. His name's Rob Bailey. He's still super active uh with them. And uh it was an in person event. There was like 36 people there and that got the company off the ground. Yeah right and wow. yeah. And now they have a billion dollar valuation. That's just wild. I did. I, I think you said I, it was on one of the calls that we had recently. That I think you said they have like how many employees now? Six thousand or something like that. Um, they've crossed over a thousand. I think it's like eleven hundred or something like that. And then um, I think they're around four hundred developers out of that. Yeah, that's amazing. They've got incredible products. Everybody. Yeah. And, and they iterate so quick. Um, it, it's nuts. I think they said they're around like 200 releases a month for um, updates or changes or bug fixes or. Yeah, I couldn't. So Varun, like in their, the, the three partners, um, John and Alex and Varun, Varun's on the developer side and that's all he does is manage those, hire more, uh, develop them. <laughs> I could imagine uh, running a team of 400 developers. That just sounds wild. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. 
All right. But, right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think, you know, for you, Dave, the, the affiliate play would definitely be something that uh, they would be interested in for sure. All right. Sounds good. Um, yeah. Cool, Michael. No worries. I'm going to jump off. Um, cool. Yeah. Anything else I can help you guys with? No, that's been phenomenal. Thank you so much for that, uh, Kyle. I'm going to have to dash as well. So can I just say big thanks See you. Are you around tomorrow evening um, or tomorrow for the next training? Yep. Oh, see, see you tomorrow, okay? All righty. See you, Robert. Right. Take care. Thank you. Oh, one thing, uh, what, do you, what do you think of the training that starts at 5 o'clock that's for agencies and, and the guy that's uh, presenting it? Oh, Simon. Yeah, he's done a master class for us before. Um, I think it was probably about a year and a half ago. Um, but yeah, Simon, Simon is good. He's like, uh, he's like John and, and um, he actually helps companies double in, in 90 days, um, their sales, you know, so he's right. got a great framework for that. I'm, I'm registered for it. So that's where I'm going from here. So Cool. Cool. Sounds good. Um, well, yeah, I'll let you jump on that or at least give you a few minutes in between. And uh, if, if Jamie is, is good, then we'll, we'll jump off here. I think Jamie's still asleep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, buddy. All right. Thanks, Dave. We'll see you. See you soon.